and welcome to News You Can Use. I'm Lisa and I'll be decoding uh, the personal finance news from last week to see how it impacts your money life. I skipped a week but I'm back now. The first uh, headline that caught my attention was from earlier in the week about bond market liquidity and the finance ministry looking at institutions for buying debt. So acting as a market maker, as a counterparty in case you want to sell your bonds before maturity. Now, bonds are a good way for individual investors, retail investors, if they're looking for regular income, if they are looking for, you know, zero volatility in the price, and if they're looking in some cases where bonds are issued by government, state or central, or good quality corporates where they're looking for safety of capital. So, you know, this is a good way for retail investors to put their money, at least for the short to medium term. However, uh, in the absence of liquidity, which means that if say you, you know, your bond matures in the next five years, but you want to sell in two years because you need the money in the equity market, you can sell at whatever price, but you can sell. Bond markets don't have that kind of liquidity. You may or may not be able to sell your full quantity at the price you want on the day you want and all of that. So having an institution there, which is going to pick that demand up, you know, in case the natural demand is missing when you want to sell or when somebody wants to buy, um, is a good thing really. It also helps more corporates to access the bond markets, which means that for retail investors, there'll be more, um, uh, you know, variety available when you, you go to shop for bonds. Uh, but this is in, you know, very early stages. This is nothing yet, but if it happens, it's good news. Okay, credit score misused. How to fix this metric? Credit score is what uh, banks look at before giving you a loan, a credit card or any kind of uh, you know borrowing that you want to do now what's happened is you may have read that uh, Dhani which is a lender uh, an NBFC uh, had uh, some clients which came up with falsified documents you know fake PAN numbers not fake but somebody else's PAN numbers and got loans from Dhani now if they default on those loans the person whose PAN number it is their credit rating gets affected which means that next time they go to any bank for a loan it could be a housing loan a car loan whatever the rate that they will get will be much higher they may not even get a loan if there's a default so people misusing um pan numbers and credit scores attached to those pan numbers and getting loans against that is very very dangerous what can you do to protect that it doesn't happen to you uh, I'm not sure right now there seems to be no real way to stop this unless you know um, the nexus is found and how it's happening for you what you need to do is keep checking your credit score uh, you will be getting emails you will be getting sms's about your credit score don't ignore those go check your credit score uh, and see because that rep credit report will have you know your various loans which are attached to your pan number it will have the rating and everything and if you notice anything then you must take it up uh, with the bank uh, notify them tell them that this is not you with the lender um so yeah i mean right now the onus is on the person who unfortunately is being wrong here um but uh, do be careful about this this is very important okay oil import bill to top 100 billion in current fiscal current fiscal means the financial year which ends uh, at the end of this month which is march um yeah so the oil import bill uh so a lot is happening around the world there is a, a war really where russia is at war with ukraine what has happened as a result is oil prices have shot up to i think 120 dollars a barrel um this is not good news obviously we've been talking about inflation week on week in this uh program and uh higher oil prices can only mean more inflation and it's bad for the government um, you know um, bill as well so um, this is not good news and how it shows up in our daily lives we'll have to sort of figure out over the next month or so okay <laughs> small uh, little headline but i thought i'll bring it up small um, sorry some wall street investors stay wary of buying the dip what is buying the dip so markets are falling that's the dip um, and people buy the dip because they they expect that it won't last that long so it's just a dip and not you're not drowning really so it, they expect that it won't last that long and you know when the markets go up you've already bought stuff at a good price however understand why I'm reading this Wall Street one rather than Indian uh, markets because 
uh, there's a lot of news out there right now with the war happening, with crude prices. Um, you know, a lot is happening. And uh, Indian markets are really getting influenced uh, by what is happening in the Western markets. And what is also happening is that foreign investors are selling here, there, everywhere. When foreign investors are exiting our Indian markets, that is impacting prices which are falling. So if things settle down in overseas uh, equity markets, then that spillover can happen to Indian markets as well. So this is important in the sense that... Um, you know, it means that uh, market watchers are expecting things to remain um, uncertain and volatile for a longer period of time. That's why they are not buying the dip. They are waiting and watching. If you're a long-term investor, you really needn't do anything. You needn't pay attention to a lot of the news uh, in markets, which is, you know, coming from what is happening in other countries, the war, uh, interest rates, etc. Um, but, you know, watch till you know that it's not affecting the Indian economy and demand in the Indian economy. If that starts getting affected, then you have to worry. As of now, there's no indication that that is happening. So, you know, uh, one just kind of stays with their long-term portfolio and not bother with some of these headlines. EPFO goes long on top PSU bonds. It means that the Employee Provident Fund uh, where, you know, if you're a salaried individual, you know that some amount of your salary every month goes into EPF. And the EPFO is the organization that manages the EPF. It invests that money. Uh, a few years ago, e till now, EPF were very, very conservative. But a few years ago, they started investing in equity. And now they are saying that other than government bonds, they are also going to invest in PSU bonds. PSUs are public sector uh, companies, uh, public sector companies, a lot of these oil companies, coal companies, power companies, and they issue long-term bonds to raise money for their operations. And the EPFO might invest there. What is the advantage? Well, you uh, the return can be slightly higher than government bonds. The risk can also be slightly higher, but there's a very small proportion that they're talking about. So uh, it should be good, I think, uh, if they are uh, sort of selective in what they pick. Government bonds get affected sorry PSU bonds get affected a lot by government policies so one has to watch out for that but other than that this should, uh, this should be good may give a kicker to the return metal stocks sizzle as fighting rages again war related uh, stock market news yes metal stocks have seen a rally and it is it's, it happens during war because you know the basics are that uh, these are limited commodities um, and hence their prices go up and, you know, war creates that kind of demand for metals. So that's another factor there. Uh, already prices have gone up anywhere between 10 to 20% in the last uh, five to seven days. It means, a, you know, this is, this is a kind of momentary change in uh, these stock prices. Um, if you're confident, you can capture the change in the time that it's happening sure but uh, for long-term investors this doesn't mean much at all okay so um that's actually what i had keep in mind that a lot of the news will be there around volatility in markets because of the external environment and what is happening uh, very little of that will be intrinsic to our economy and to your portfolio. So be careful about what news you react to. Uh, in all probability, 90%, 95% of the market news, which is linked to what is happening overseas, can be ignored despite the kind of fear psychosis that they feed on. Just, uh, you know, stay put uh, with your long-term portfolio. So yeah, it's tricky these times for news headlines. Thank you for watching, uh, do tune in next week as well.